The Whippled LT DLX has been running well on the street and at the track, but as usual there was room for improvement. We noticed that it was using a lot of ice per pass. It would easily melt 15 pounds of ice in the air to water intercooler tank during a low 10 second run. The blower does have a heat shield under it that runs the full length of the blower all the way to the firewall. Even so, we wondered if it's still sucking in hot air and just how hot that air is. After all, cooler air in means cooler air out, which means more timing, more power, and less heat to battle. With adequate icing, the IATs will stay under 150 degrees at the track, even in the summer, but if we're not careful with the cooling procedures, the IATs can get as high as 169, too high on 14 psi in pump gas. Pump gas means 93 octane pump gas. As the mega squirt is set to pull timing when IATs hit 140 degrees, even hitting 140 degrees has an effect on mile per hour, but less so on ET. The same thing happens if you lift at the 1000 foot mark. You might lose 10 miles per hour, but only a couple of tenths in ET. We also thought the temps on the street would benefit from better air management, so we strapped a thermocouple to the air filter and went for a drive. On an 80 degree day, we noticed temps quickly got to 120 degrees or higher. It didn't seem to matter if we were driving at 30 or 55 miles an hour. The temps never really cooled off. Plus, the car's coolant got to 180 degrees pretty quickly. We saw peaks of over 140 degrees. 144, look at that. So we tried a few basic things. First of all, we put the weather stripping at the firewall hood joint back in. It was taken out some time ago and has been kicking around the garage for a few years. What this does is help maintain the engine compartment as a low pressure zone. This helps pull the air through the radiator and should help with the next step. That next step being to route cold air in from the cowl into the engine compartment right at the air filter. Since the LTD's HVAC system has been substantially simplified, the original HVAC intake was now just blowing air into the cabin. Some years back, we built an air filter housing contraption that routed the cold high pressure cowl air towards the blower inlet. It was ugly back then and time hasn't been kind to it. But it was here and so it was used. We can always make something much more elegant and effective if this was to prove successful. So with just two mods, we went for another drive. Even though the ambient temps were 10 degrees cooler at about 70 degrees, we almost immediately noticed a difference. When the car was moving, the temps at the air filter would plummet down to the 90 degree and under range. When the car was stopped, the temps would shoot up, but as soon as we were moving again, down they'd go. We're going to stop for just a little bit. Watch how fast it shoots up. 98, 99, look at that. It's going through the roof. But watch how quickly it cools off now. Before it leveled off at about 120. noticeably cooler too. So it took longer to discover our gotcha. As soon as the radiator cooling fan kicked on, our carefully created low pressure hot air, high pressure cold air balance went straight to hell. The air temps in the filter were slightly cooler, but only by the difference of the ambient air. And driving no longer had the drastic cooling effect. In short, this experiment was a rousing success. The next step would be to enclose the air filter completely in order to isolate it from the engine bay air. A 10 degree reduction in intake temps is worth 1% in power. We've already found a 30 to 40 degree reduction when driving with the radiator fan off just by doing these two simple things. I think we can get to within 10 degrees of ambient all the time. Stay tuned.